combusted play and kept anything bad from happening. And one thing you can't do in this offense, Paul, is because it's so predicated on motion and play action, plays are going to take a little bit of time to develop. It's going to be very detrimental when you turn somebody loose or you miss an assignment. We saw it last time with Mike Blanc in the last series. We saw it there, turning the outside rusher loose. You do that, and all of a sudden, you really have nowhere to go. The play is completely disrupted. Burns again from the shotgun. Looking left, looking left. Has a man. Quindarius Carr bobbles and drops. So it's incomplete. I would think the way wide receiver coach Trooper Taylor has run practices this spring, that would cost him some money. I know those wide receivers have, have been working hard, extra hard. Trooper Taylor's a guy who has really brought new life to that whole wide receiver core. They're all excited about him. They like him. He's a young, energetic guy. Great presence in the pocket by Cody Burns. A lot of zip on that football. Just have to hold on to it. So now it's third and 10. Burns. Plenty of time, lets it fly. Almost picked off and tipped and caught. Mario Fannin deep downfield. Flags fly, but Mario Fannin hauls in the tip pass. It's a big first down if it holds. We'll see what the flag is for, 42 yards. And if it stands, Cole, that'll be two points on the big play, but a fortunate throw. Good protection. You saw that ball. I don't know if the wind caught it. Kind of just bit down to the right at the end. Mario Fannin had a step on the defender. Had to come back to the football. Makes a great adjustment, though, staying with that play. Looks like safety Brandon Evans will probably walk away from the play, feeling as though he should have intercepted it. Instead, tipped it to the hands of Mario Fannin, who lost the helmet but held the ball. So two more points for the offense with the big play. Face mask penalty moves the ball just inside the 10-yard line. So it's a first and goal for Cody Burns and company. Ben Tate inside the five. Ben Tate, his second touchdown of the day. Nine-yard touchdown for Ben Tate. I would say Cole right out of the gate. Tate is having a spectacular day. He's having a great day. And a nice job up front by the offensive lineman here. Watch big 57, Baron Isom. Pulling out front, Tate's going to make a great cut back in there. Follow your blockers, east and west. Cut back behind those big offensive linemen. Hide behind the defenders and get into the end zone. West Byram on to try the point after. He is true once again. So with the touchdown and point after, along with the explosive play, the offense leads 16-4. Let's go down to Melissa. Yeah, you know, the offensive line, they're freeing up some holes. They're a little bit bigger this year. Last year, they were asked to lose about 20 pounds to be a little bit faster, lighter, and Tony Franklin's offense. Gus Malzahn got here and said, forget that, guys. Put on about 20 pounds. They were put on a 5,000-calorie diet. Guys like Lee Zimba, Ryan Pugh have already packed on 20, 30 pounds already. Byron Ison, about 15 pounds. He's got about 10 more to go. But Gus Malzahn, he wants his offensive lineman big, strong, Strong, physical, bottom line, he wants them to just push people around. And so far, they're doing that today, guys. They certainly are, Melissa. And the, everyone's up to 300 and just a little more. The only guy not trying to pack things on is guard Mike Berry. Big snacks, Barry. Well, he's big enough. <laughs> he's a 313. And so much people don't really understand change for this offensive line last year. It wasn't just a change of system. It was a change in mentality. It was an overhaul in fundamentals of footwork, the way the center snapped the shotgun ball. Everything changed for these guys. And when you try to completely overhaul yourself as a player, as an offensive lineman, you have to be so technically sound, it really disrupts you as a player. Certainly, in talking about the east-west being out straight ahead, Ben Tate used a nice cut for his second touchdown of the day. Four carries, 72 yards for Ben Tate, two touchdowns. One from 46 and one from nine. So thus far, the offense, which again had struggled through these scrimmages with a similar scoring system, has come out very strong. And Cody Burns thus far in his group has been the recipient of it. Well, they've had a couple of big plays. Minus from last year, Auburn really needs that. Again, Byram kicking. And again, it's Ontario McCaleb, the speedy freshman from the state of Florida. And it's touch football on the return, so McCaleb will have to slow things up as the Neil Caudill offense should get its second crack. It's a day at Auburn, the spring game, and so far the offense looking good.
strike up the band. Football is in the air on a beautiful spring day in Auburn, Alabama. It's the A-Day spring game where the offense has itself a comfortable lead. We are through one quarter, and what Coach Chiswick has decided to do is have 12-minute running clock quarters because, frankly, we had mentioned they have cranked the tempo up at practice, have been flying around and playing full speed. Even the quarterbacks have been live at times. Brett Barrett Trotter is still in the mix, but not able to play today because of a hit he took on Thursday. Neil Caudle and Cody Burns, and it's Caudle giving it to Justin Albert, who has a little running room as Coach Chiswick starts the offense deep in its own territory this time from the 20 out to about the 22, a two-yard gain for the walk-on. Who has impressed this spring? Yeah, and another guy who's impressed is the man in on that tackle, number 21, El Toro Freeman. Junior college transfer expected to step right in and start for this Auburn defense at Sam linebacker. Caleb now the one high snap, call of controls, and quickly on top of that, there's a busted play. As Michael Goggins comes in from his defensive end position and does not allow Caudill to get his feet under him, so a loss of about four on the play will bring up third and 12. So second opportunity for the Caudill run offense and facing what he's going to try to avoid is a second three and out. Caudill takes the snap under pressure. Down he goes. Another sack. So another four points for the defense. Great penetration up front. Mike Goggins in there again. The defensive end spot. Michael Goggins, a guy who got quality playing time last year, has the frame and the size, really got caught in the mix with a couple other older guys that really played in front of him. This year, he's going to be somebody counted on to start for that Auburn defense. Lock down that, that weak side defensive end spot. He's going to have to play the run. He's going to have to get pressure in pass situations there. Able to tee off a nice bull rush. Gets the pressure in the pocket and forces a sack. Back-to-back -back sacks as we see Justin Albert ready to field the punt. Four points for a sack for the defense. So they just picked up eight quick points. And that's one of the things that kind of drove the offensive guys crazy in the scrimmages. The sack being four points. Nice kick by Clinton Durst. So that punt, 30. A big, beautiful punt from Durst, but another three and out for the Auburn defense. Welcome back to Auburn, where the offense versus defense, a day spring game. A couple of big touchdown runs by Ben Tate as the Auburn offense with the lead, but the defensive unit has put together a pretty good stand. Back-to-back -back sacks, and in the scoring system have closed the gap. 9.40 to play here in the second quarter, and the Cody Burns, Ben Tate unit is about to retake the field. You can see the numbers on Ben Tate after his first two possessions. And Ben Tate, one of the better tailbacks in the SEC. We mentioned before, just didn't have a chance to really get that momentum going last season and become an every down back. But in this offense, he should thrive. Ball starting at the 30-yard line. A little play action, then misdirection. Walkers. Terrell Zachary on his way, has one to beat. Zachary down the sideline, touchdown. 70 yards, Terrell Zachary on the misdirection flea flagger. <laughs> You're going to see why Lee Zimba was freshman All-SEC two years ago. Last year, he struggled. A lot of offside procedure penalties. Didn't really get the momentum going. Watch big 73, bottom left of your screen. Quick reverse, play action working. He gets his man pancake once. You'll probably see the second effort there. His guy's down on the ground. Zachary able to take advantage outside. Another big play for this Auburn offense. Paul, we talked about last year. Unable to develop those plays 15, 20 yards downfield. This offense starting to open up a little bit today. Well, the 70 yard play, certainly explosive. That's two points. The touchdown is six, and the point after is one more. As West Byram is three for three, but the reverse to wide receiver Terrell Zachary. That initial motion from the receiver on the left is what really gives that defense the heads up that, hey, this play is going to go to the left or go to their left. Hits that ball right back around to Zachary. 